and uh, welcome to this first uh, pre-summit workshop uh, hosted by the Canadian Open Data Society. My name is Paul Connor, and I'm the executive director of the society, which was founded just under a year ago. And uh, we were founded as a result of uh, the 2018 Canadian Open Data Summit, uh, the latest version of which starts tomorrow. Uh, the findings of the attendees at the end were that we should have a permanent uh, base of operations for uh, advocating and disseminating open data in Canada. So thank you all for joining us. I'm just going to admit some more people here and introduce uh, my colleague here, uh, founding member Lee Doucette of Related.to, uh, who will be delivering uh, today's workshop. Uh, if you have any questions or concerns, uh, please don't hesitate to put them into the chat and uh, we, will, we will make sure to uh, address them uh, as soon as we can. Thank you. Hmm. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to my workshop. I just want to quickly say hi to everyone. I hope everyone's had some coffee and it's feeling good. Hopefully I can teach you some good stuff. I'm just going to quickly um, unshare my screen, sorry, take off my video and share my screen and we'll get started. Okay. All right. <clears throat> so yeah, so welcome to the Data on a Dime workshop. Uh, my name is Lee. Uh, thank you for introducing me, Paul, and I'll be leading it. So today we're going to work on a data project built on exciting open data that I hope is going to help educators, students, and citizens ask important questions uh, regarding their community. Um, everything we're going to do today is 100% reproducible, so you can do it on your own time and you can apply it to other uh, projects as well. I'm going to provide copies of my instructions afterwards, so don't worry if you miss a step. I'd also like people to go along with me if they can, uh, no obligation, and I'll make pauses and try to go at an appropriate speed for you guys to be able to do that. And I'd like this to be informal if possible, if you want me to slow down, uh, ask questions at any point. I can't guarantee I'm going to be able to answer them, but I'll do my best. So let's uh, start. So today's agenda. I'm just gonna briefly explain why I'm here talking to you and who this is. Um, what I hope to um, teach you guys, some toolbox, sorry, the toolbox, so what tools you're gonna to be learning. I'm gonna introduce our data project, and then finally a live demonstration so we can get off this PowerPoint. So I'm sure everyone's sick of PowerPoint as it is. Okay, so I'm a recent graduate from uh, the Faculty of Information at the University of Toronto. I study critical information policy studies and human values of data science. I'm also a research analyst at related.to. So I'm not a classically trained, uh, I don't have a computer science background, which I think is really exciting, which really shows you the power of open data. You don't have to learn how to code to make cool things happen. I think that's really important um, for our community to not feel like we're gatekeeped out of it. Like, oh, I don't know Python. I don't even know what Python is and I can't uh, contribute. Um, there are some new stuff you'll have to learn if you're not familiar, but I think it's more challenging just because it's new, not because it's actually difficult. And finally, um, one of the reasons why I was brought here is because I, I run the Robot Training Academy for uh, Related.to. And what it is, is the summer we ran a pilot project where we taught high school students and university students data science skills while they earned school credit that was related to our work. Yeah, it was an awesome opportunity to see the upcoming students and they just do phenomenal work. It was actually pretty much an autopilot once I taught them how to do it. So we would teach them for about an hour, give them instruction, maybe an hour and a half, and then I would just watch them do amazing work for us that our data analysts would do. So I'm hoping we're gonna do a mini version of this and I think it should be very successful. So just from our learning outcome, oop, um, I want you to get more familiar with some open source tools. So basically free to use. Um, we're gonna be able to improve our existing data sets to increase their richness and analysis, which is so important for open data. And hopefully we're gonna have some topics of interest that you guys will be inspired to, to either ask yourself, students or colleagues to say, hey, what can we do about this? So the three things we're gonna be using today is Open Data Toronto. Uh, then we're gonna use Google Sheets 
And then we're going to use Tableau Public. Now, if you're following along with me, I would recommend you maybe sign up to Tableau Public now just to make things easy. So all you have to do for that is really simple, is just go to Tableau Public, and then you can just sort of sign in. It's a very simple process and you don't have to download anything. The benefit of this lecture is everything is going to be online. And it's one of the decisions as to why I decided that, hold on, why I decided to use Google Sheets instead of uh, Microsoft Excel. So if you could just download that if you want to follow along, and if not, I'll give the instructions afterwards. Okay. So our first participatory part of the presentation. Um, does anybody know what this image is? I can't quite see the chat, so. Um, I can see the chat. Your screen is not shared anymore. Can you bring it back up? Oh, thank you. Uh, okay. Give me one second. Okay, are we good? Oh. Yes. Sorry about that. So um, does anybody know what this image is? The condo collapse in Miami. Yes, thank you. Yes, this is, uh, I think it was called the Sun Surf uh, condo collapse from Miami. So when I saw this, this really caught my eyes. I'm like, how could this happen? So I looked at it a bit more, you know, I believe like the engineers said these were, there were critical problems that were addressed. Now we won't go too much into the reasons why it collapsed, um, but you know, I sort of look at a data project when I see something like this and go, huh, oh, that's interesting. So, um, so three things that I thought sort of after this happened was, can we get data on building conditions? Does that exist in the open data format? What can we learn about a major city like Toronto? And I picked Toronto because I'm you know, born and raised. And the data on the dime portion of our workshop is what can we learn without a significant time investment? Because to be honest, researching a lot of issues can take probably as many of you know, like you know, days, if not minimal, right? To do a literature review. So we have to find something that's like, you know, zoom in something with an appropriate size, which is sort of the trick. So I'm gonna show you guys how to do something pretty simple and easy. That I think has some cool results. So that concludes the PowerPoint part of my presentation. So we're now going to go into the live uh, demonstration part. Okay. So if you guys get a chance, just uh, simply open up your web browser. Uh, So just go to Open Data Toronto. Click on this. And you wanna to go to the Open Data Portal. And that's what it brought to our screen. Um, if anyone needs me to slow down at any point, just let me know. So we're gonna look at apartment buildings to see if there's any data on them. So we can see here, we have two data sets that are available from apartment building. One is the registration and one is the evaluation. Um, an important thing to realize, um, sorry, important thing to realize is the format. We wanna make sure it's good. So we have XML, JSON, CSV, and both these. So that means we can use them. So, if you click on them on registration, we're going to get some information, which is really key. Okay. So again, there is some reading part of this. So I'm just going to skip part of it. I'll tell you what's key just to save some time. This is part of what's called uh, the Rent uh, Safe Program. And what it is, is any building multi-tenant over three stories, that's a rental building, um, has to be registered with the city. Now, an important caveat is that there is no condos attached um, to this program uh, right now. It will be nice in the future. And maybe we could use the results of this to maybe push towards that. So that's part of like the understanding the data. 
So before we download it, I just want to show you the data features. So right under here, you can pretty much see all the things that uh, you might be interested in to look at. Now, these data sets are pretty big, um, but things that could be interesting is to confirm stories, like you can figure out how, you know, how many stories a building is, how many units they are for occupancy. You can see the status of several things. Is, is there fire alarms in the building? I don't know about you, but that, that sort of concerns me that there wouldn't be fire alarms in a building, but I'm sure it's because they're in the process of installing them or they've been grandfathered in, the heating type. Now, these are all sort of interesting things. So, and here's the part that I'm most interested in for right now. It's, this is called the RSN number. And this is the ID number of the building. And it can be used to identify unique buildings and match with future uh, data sets. This number here is gonna give us the ability. So if a building is in that building, we're gonna be able to match it to a building in another data set. That's gonna allow us to do certain things. That's kind of cool. So, so what you're gonna do at this point is just simply download the data. Okay, and put that in a space that you know where it is, because you'll have to bring it out. Okay, sorry. Okay, do the same thing for this data. Now there's some interesting stuff in this data. It has a year registered, um, evaluation scores, which I think is gonna be important for us because now we're gonna know how, uh, how well the building score. It's gonna talk about things that are interesting like security, stairwells, laundry rooms, uh, garbage chutes and elevators, uh, graffiti. Now, after looking at the data initially, we can sort of figure that, okay, if it's gonna score the buildings. Now, I know for a fact score just basically adds everything together and divides. So we know that graffiti is really not going to tell us if a building is going to collapse. Um, no, but there are stuff that are important, like the parking facility, the balcony guards, the exterior grounds and walkways. Uh, you know, the cl there's cladding in here. So there is important stuff. So I think we might be able to use this as a, maybe a barometer of the quality of the building, not that anyone's in you know, imminent danger. And finally, the other important thing plus RSN is going to be the latitude and longitude. This is going to allow us to plot things. Okay, so just download the data when you can. Uh, pick a CSV format just as it's easier. Um, XML will still work, but just download it. Does anybody have any questions at this point? Or I need to go over why we're using these two data sets? Please feel free to put them in the chat. I'll just pause for a minute. All right, there's no, do you have any questions? Are we good? Sorry, I just had a quick one I put into the chat. Oh yeah. Uh, just wanted to confirm the two data sets that I'm grabbing. Yeah, uh, so type in building apartment and you wanna grab um, apartment building registration and apartment building evaluation. Perfect, thank you so much. Not a problem. <coughs> Thank you, Eugene. Okay. Okay. So I want you to go into your web browser and go into Google. So hold on. So Next to your profile, there's going to be some dots here. If you click on it, and should, so if you go all the way to Sheets, this is basically um, very similar to Microsoft Excel. It's just online, and it's Google's version. OK.
So I'm going to call it something like Toronto data. And then we're going to go to file. Don't go to open, go to import. And then we're going to go to upload. Once you've done upload, I'll go slow for this part. Change it from new spreadsheet into insert new sheet. So what we're going to be doing here is I want to merge two parts of um, those two data sets together uh, without a traditional tool. So import data. Let's give it a second to load. And there we go, bada bing, bada boom. So we're gonna do it again for the other data set now. So it should be easier, file, import. The reason you don't do open, it's gonna open it in another tab. Uh, you want it in just another sheet. So select file from device and you wanna grab the other one. Okay, same thing, insert new sheet. And just give that a second to load. You don't really need this. You can delete it or keep it. It doesn't really matter. Okay, so we have two sheets. So if we go to the building registration, sorry, actually, let's, let's just let's stop for a second the evaluation. So we have that RSN number we love. And then we, we look over here, you can start to see all the scores on the buildings. You can see the results of the evaluation. Uh, evaluation needs to be done in X amount of years. The number of areas evaluated, um, the garbage chutes. Again, half these things are interesting. Half of them are kind of okay, but not that important. And again, the important thing of latitude and longitude. On apartment registration, we have other data that we might be interested in. And I'll pull over a couple things. Um, Okay, where are we? So let's see. Um, let's see. We'll grab, where's the postal codes? Okay. So we'll probably grab property management company and postal code. So what we're gonna do for that as we're gonna grab, so before we start, um, let me find the RSN number on this one. It's probably over here. RSN, okay, I saw you. Okay, perfect. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab it and we're gonna pull it all the way to the front. So you want on the, Apartment building registration, you want to pull RSN just to the front. I'll give you guys a second just to do that. And while we're doing it, it's going to match on that key. So it's the same RSN number is in building evaluation. The only thing I will say is you don't need this one to be here for this. Um, but that sounds sort of a bit awkward. I would agree. Okay. So once that is done, we got to make space to bring over data. So what we're going to do is simply grab this, insert one left. So we're going to insert data in here. Um, I, I'm going to put a formula in the chat. Just give me, I'm going to stop sharing for one second so I can do that. Okay. Does everyone see the formula? No, <laughs> I see the formula in the chat. Are you yeah, saying? Okay, yeah, I just put it in there for people who need it. Okay, but I'm not seeing it, of course, in the uh, cell. No, we'll, we'll get okay, here we go, got it. Okay, so um, I'm gonna talk about the formula. Now, please don't look at this formula. This is the most complicated thing we're doing and it's a simple copy and paste. Um, this is called the VLOOKUP. And this is how Google Sheets 
will find data from another cell. The reason why we have to do it is because, you know, if you look at number this one here, this number, um, this is different from this. So what it does is it takes this, oh, it takes this number, looks into this sheet under, that's called, that's called this, and basically brings back uh, the value that corresponds to number 43. Now, 43, all it is, is this sheet, it's just 43 columns. It would have been nice if we could have called it by its name, but um, it's pretty simple to find things if you think about it. It's a letter system. So how, if you look at actually it's AQ. So what I did was I basically, I know Z is 26 and Q, I didn't know off by heart. I looked it up at 17. Those together bring 43. So that explains why that one's there. Um, false, don't worry about. And this is probably also, you know, what is this nonsense? Um, this is basically just the parameters of the table. If you look at it very carefully, it's A2 and BJ is uh, 3,481. Is just all the way down there? So, but I wouldn't worry about that too much. So we're gonna copy this. So copy it. Again, click on this magic table and we're going to paste special, paste formula only. And wow, bada bing, bada boom. We have now brought over every matching postal code. And this one's obviously, we're gonna call it P code. So once again, when you clicked on there, you'd have to go to paste special and paste formula only. Does anybody have any questions on that? This is sortable, right? This column, now that you've done this? Yeah. Excellent. So just remember, paste formula only. Does everyone? Okay. Can I get? I can't really see the chat, but can I get like a thumbs up or something that people who are following along this they're they're good? Yeah, I'm good. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Okay, we're gonna do it once more, just because this is not the field that I really want. So we're gonna do it again. We're gonna go to insert one left. Now we're going to grab something else. Now, the good news is this is a lot easier to do now that we've done it once. So what I want is the property management information. So we go to the other sheet. I'll just show you, but the formula is the same. And hold on, it's a T. So now I want a T. So T I believe is like two, three more. So we just simply, all we have to do to bring it over is take the formula now and make sure you change three to six. Okay. You're going to copy the formula, go to paste special, paste formula only. So some of these are missing. They don't have the information, unfortunately, but still, there you go. Uh, property management. And once you've done it the second time, it's pretty easy. Now you can keep doing that. And the power of this is you can take open data, find two sets with one common thing, such as RSN, and then you can start building the features you want. You can take things away. You can sort of sculpt your data. This is a very easy way to do it minus the weird awkward formula, but it's not that complicated once you do it a couple of times. Now, this can also be done by Tableau Prep, um, R, Python, and various other ways, but this is a way that anybody can do without having anything installed on the computer. Now, just some of you might be wondering why I'm not using ID. Now, RSN is just the global number for that they use for all buildings. ID is for like the data sets, and it will match. Like there will be a 1.8, three, six, two, five in the other data set. I'm just specifically chose to use RSN. Okay, um, that sort of talks about the first part about merging data together. Did um, everyone follow? Any questions? I'll just pause for questions. I think we can go ahead. Okay, just give me one sec. Um, okay, 
So now with that cool data, don't forget, we got to save it somewhere. So you have to go to view, download. I'm going to download it as, as a comma separated value. I typically would prefer this. Um, it's not mandatory. It's just with the with CS, uh, CSV files, you can use them faster because there's less markups data. So with bigger data sets, CSVs are just going to perform faster. So move it on your desktop or someplace. So, OK. So I'm just going to give a minute now because we need to sign in uh, for anyone. Actually, does anyone need a minute just to sign in to public Tableau? You'll get an email sent to you and you'll just have to follow the link. It's, it's pretty painless. This is the fun stuff. Can I send that file? Um, hold on. All right, um, I just sent in chat the Toronto data, apartment data. So if someone wants to use this and didn't want to do the Google Sheets or had trouble, they can use that. I'll have all these files on my uh, GitHub afterwards, but we can go with that. Does anyone need another minute just for signing up for Tableau Public or they have their own? Um, I use desktop version, but I'm, I have my own desktop version, but I'm going to use the public. So okay. I would um, just go ahead. Oh, okay. sorry. So, uh, Paul, the, uh, you didn't provide any uh, ID or password for, like, uh, we can open our own account, right, for Tableau Public? Yeah, you'll have to sign in. You'll have to probably give a username or something, but it'll go right to your yeah. um, email. My email. Yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. I highly recommend getting familiar with Tableau Public. There's a lot of fun stuff with it, but... Um, I'll just give you 30 seconds just to move the process along and I'll go slow for the first part. It's not very complicated. Actually, maybe I'll just explain the features of public Tableau. Okay, so create visualization. So first thing we're gonna do is just grab the file on the desktop. So, okay. So for our purposes, I'm not gonna go over everything with Tableau. That would take a whole nother workshop. And I don't think Paul's given me permission for that. Um, for what our intents and purposes, we're gonna be looking at the table section and we're gonna be getting our data from here. And then we're gonna be using this uh, section to visualize. Um, this section here uh, is sort of where we'll do some editing and some filtering, like there's size, there's colors, and we can uh, filter uh, data, which is useful if you only want certain years. Uh, the traditional columns and rows you should be familiar with. Okay, so let's see. Mm. So yeah, if you're just installing public or just getting access, if you're a minute behind, I uh, wouldn't worry. Uh, the steps look pretty repeatable. At any point, you can ask me a question. So the first step is one of the reasons why we love this data so much is that it has longitude and latitude. And you'll see what I mean in a few seconds. So grab the longitude and put it in columns. Now, you'll notice this is average. Just quickly change that to dimension. Good. I know it looks weird, but that's okay. Grab the latitude, put it in rows. And there we go. That's, can anyone tell me what city this is? Looks like to you. Looks like Toronto to me, the islands and everything. Looks kind of nice, doesn't it? To change the dimensions. So right now, we pretty much have, and we're gonna grab RSN just as some details. Just put RSN right in here. Oh, I did something naughty. Hey, don't do that, okay. Sorry about that. So one thing about our Tableau is you'll notice three things. There's a little globe here. There's a number sign there. And there's an ABC here. Now, what this basically means is RSN is treated as a number um, for mathematical purposes. And we don't want that. So we're going to grab the arrow. We're going to change the data type to string. So that way, it's treated <clears throat> as that. 
And then we're going to change it to convert to dimension. So we're going to grab the RSN. Now, if you look at my screen, we now have 3,426 marks. So this is every uh, rental building in the city, we have numbers on them. Uh, did everybody was able to put the longitude and latitude in and convert RSN to a string? There's a few steps in there. Maybe you better go through those. Go, go through it again? Yeah, just yeah. finish it. Okay. And this is a good thing about Tableau Public is you can just pretty much remove everything. Okay. So thank you, Paul. So once again, we have all our data here. So grab the longitude, put it up into columns. Make sure you, and then put it to dimension. If you see average, it's not going to work. We want to grab the latitude and put it into rows. The good news, by the way, what I'm doing is you, the colors will match and they'll be the same. If it looks like mine, you can pretty much tell if you have a problem or not. So there we go. We're then going to grab um, our, sorry, actually, let's, let's reconvert. Uh, number hole. Okay, so this is what Iris is going to look like on yours. Um, and it'll be a measure too. Okay. So RSN needs to be changed. So simply go to change data type to string and then switch to a dimension. So RSN is now up here. It is the ABC next to it, which we want. And then we can just drag and drop. I apologize if this is new to anyone. Um, this might be sort of awkward, but it's becomes, it's sort of like the last one where it's, it becomes infinitely easier. It's no longer about where you put things, it's more about the questions you ask. I hope that helps. So we have, again, 34, 26 marks. So we now have access to just over 3,000 uh, buildings in Toronto. Now let's have some fun. Now, if we go back to our original uh, questions where it was, what can we learn about buildings in Toronto? Do we have any indicators? Because right now this is, I don't want to say useless, but it's not going to really solve any questions for us. So what we're going to do, which I, is go to year evaluated. Now we're going to do the exact same thing we did to the previous. So string and, oops, sorry. Oh, good, sorry, sorry, I, sorry. It's already actually an ABC. So we're going to grab that and put it right underneath. So if you look at the buildings, it now, ha it now has every feature now. We know it's evaluated in 2017. Now, if we wanna look at buildings that are lowest quality, the way that data set um, is organized, actually, let's just do it like this. Go to filter. Okay. So the way the data set was organized is it pretty much has the last years of evaluation. So what we're gonna do is take off all and I just want to see the buildings that were evaluated this year, because those are the ones that are probably going to be the most concerning. So we do that, and voila. We've shrunk down from just 3,500 to roughly 429. Now, we still don't know the quality. Now, I was going to pause for a second right here. Um, if I should go through that step again, or anyone has any questions, or does people's tableau look really awkward and they would like some help? Okay, I'll just quickly go over how I did year evaluated again, just to give people a sec to catch up if they're wanting. Okay, so year evaluated is here. We're back to a ridiculous amount. And then we're gonna to go to filter. And here we go, we're back to 429. Simple as that. It'll appear up here if it's filter, it'll appear up here and it'll tell you the filters it's under. But still, we need to, obviously this is not that helpful. We need to, now we need to figure out something about the quality of the building. So um, there should be something called results of score. So we're gonna put results of score in now. 
So we now know oops, evaluation needs to be conducted in three years. Those buildings are probably good. Conducted in one year, that's probably more dangerous. You see two years. So we're going to do the same process. We're going to add a filter and we're going to take it off. And this year we're just going to do is a current building audit and there's a building audit need to be conducted in one year. So the two filters you're going to want is building audit and evaluation needs to be conducted in one year. So if you're successful, it'll pop up here. So now we've gone all the way down just to 76 buildings that have needed an evaluation this year or needs one in one year, which means it's probably not bad, but there's certain things wrong with it. Let's give everyone a second to pause. Do we have any more questions? Okay, I'll move forward. I'm gonna put score on here now. Now what score is gonna do is now we have 60, 64, 60. Now this is awesome because we know all the buildings are recently, none of them are really scoring that high. And I know for a fact the data set has several buildings in the hundreds. So it looks like all the buildings that are being evaluated this year under and are being audited this year are in trouble. We're not gonna put a filter on, but I just wanna show you that this is the range from 20. So there's a building at 20 and 65. So the problem with this right now is it's hard to tell which is which. If I showed you this, you're gonna go, huh? So we need to do some color. We're gonna take the results of score, put it into color. And we can sort of see at this point, the color, I kind of want red to be bad. So clicking on color, we're gonna to go to edit colors. Now here's the, I'll just, I should do it one more time. So grab this, throw it into here, then just do a simple left click and you can edit colors. So take building audit, just click on it and go to red and take this, and I think maybe yellow or any color you want. It doesn't really matter. It doesn't lie, you don't have to press anything. And now you can maybe just increase the size a little bit. So these are where the problem buildings are. Now let's take score and filter it. And we can pick our number. Let's try 55 at first. And there we go, we have 11 marks. So right now we've identified that these are where the more problem buildings are in the city. Um, does anybody just want to take a crack at what, what we'd also like to put onto these buildings to make it more useful for us? There's no right, wrong answer. Sorry, it took me a second to unmute here, but uh, you know, graffiti might be interesting just to see uh, which neighborhoods um, have more of that stuff to view. Because that's right. Sort of, right? All right, perfect. I'll do another, I can do a quick visualization um, after I put some more information on, but yeah, that would be good actually, what neighborhoods have more graffiti. Uh, I guess I was trying to say, we, we want to identify the building, right? So we does anyone know what an RSN number means? Like, can you call up and say, hey man, do you live an RSN number? I wouldn't know what an RSN number means. So using our open data, we can now make add more meaning to that. So first we can do, is this is the feature section. And I'm telling you, there's a lot of cool stuff you can put on. So um, let's have a look here. So this is the site address. So if we do this, we now, whatever you put our mouse there, we know the address now of every building, which is not done well. Now, I apologize if anyone li lives in this building. I'm not saying it's a terrible building. I'm saying these are the ones that score for a potential. So you now have the address. Does anyone live in any of these buildings? I... And then we can get, grab the property manager. And well, bada bing, bada boom. Well, that one has none. There you go. <laughs> Bless you. So we have Stonegate property, building audits. Oh. 
and trigger it. So half of them have property managers, half don't. So you could do, you could actually organize it by property managers. So that's essentially just where I, I plan for time wise uh, to get at. So basically starting our journey from two open data sets, we've merged them together to create some more data. And then we've put them in here with Tableau and we scored it based on building. Does anyone have any questions about the process or a part that wasn't clear? Do you want me to go over this process again? I think it's okay. Okay, perfect. So, oh, perfect. So I'm really hoping the goal of this was you could uh, show, uh, get your students um, or yourself to really do some work in here. It's a bit awkward at first, just because it's new and once you just get past it, that, that part, it's actually pretty easy to maneuver, right? And you can ask any question you want and you can solve it. Let's see, remove. So results of score, okay. Uh, oop, review. Okay, so what does Paul wanna do? Where is the RSM? Okay, put the RSM here. Where is graffiti? Oh, see, I didn't, I didn't follow my. No, actually, we will want this as some graffiti is 18, maybe. Seems kind of high. It must be clustering it. Okay, there you go. Okay, let's see what we got. Okay, that wasn't that. Uh, smaller. So again, this is doing live. So I would have to tinker this a bit more, but my initial perception is it looks like, uh, it's hard to tell because the buildings are more clustered, but the good news is, Paul, that graffiti seems to be spread everywhere in the city. There's no specific concentration. Yeah, you, you can. You can edit colors and you can put like different steps in, like step color. That's very interesting, actually. Yeah, you can reverse the colors. Yeah. Suggest, got a suggestion from Eugene in the chat, use a diverging color scheme, perhaps. Is that so? I will, I will, I must preface this by saying I'm not a master of Tableau. Okay. Oh, there you go. Uh, diverging color scheme. Good idea. Um, does anyone have one in particular they're interested in? Eugene, why don't you pick one? I have faith in you. Blue, red. Sorry, what? Red, blue. Red, blue. Okay, perfect. Where is uh, red, blue, diverging. Okay. Interesting. So. Is the graffiti number a score of how much, or is it just a number? Like, is it bad or I'm not sure what number means. It's a score of one to five. So one is bad and five is good. Oh. Great. So, okay, so this, this tells a bit better of a story. Thank you for that. So it looks like it's concentrated more in here where this area is more free. So if you live up here, I think that's Midtown, I think. Hold on, let's grab a bit of site. Postal code, we can get the postal code. So what is M2N? M4N. M2 is like North York, if I recall correctly. I, I, I spent a few years there as a child. I was at M2J myself. Okay. So, okay. So this area looks a lot more cl clear. And by the way, you can grab this and just grab that and just see. Yeah, downtown looks a little bit more 
concentrated. Yeah. So as simple as that, without you know any pre-planning, you can ask a question, just dive right in. Um, I won't go into it now, but I think it would be very interesting if you look at, you can do year built um, plus, I think the other one is property type. And that one is property type is private, Toronto community housing and um, social housing. And you can sort of see the year built that um, the year, uh, how things fall off for the public investment. Um, I probably wouldn't use like a, a visual map. Maybe I'd use like a bar chart or something. Cause also just to be clear tableau, you can make, it's not just, you're not limited to graphs. You can do all kinds of things for free. So I would pick like a bar graph or, or something. And that would be a fun case. You could bas basically see, we, we had this huge housing crisis in 2021 and everyone's pointing fingers at each other. And you can actually look at the timeline when things are built that pretty much public investment in housing fell off in the, in the 90s, right? Except I looked at it previously in another class, so. And you can compare anything. You can sort of do regressions to see Hey, which one of these things is a stronger, maybe correlates more, right? So, and you can make more data. You can do postal code to see which postal code has the, on average is better. There's an infinite amount of way to do things, which is fun. So that pretty much concludes my class. Um, if anyone has any questions, I'm just going to do one more. Uh, Paul, can I just do a brief um, announcement for the Robot Training Academy for a minute? Yes, absolutely. Okay, I'm just gonna stop sharing too. <clears throat> Hello. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. Um, for those that are running late, um, one of my jobs that related to is to run the Robot Training Academy, where I take students and give them school credit, and I sort of teach them how to do data science stuff, or maybe even some like visualization like this. That's basically based on our work. Um, so we're Recruiting now, I have two workshops coming up uh, in, in October, one on web scraping, which will be taught the same way as this, and another one data extraction. So basically getting data sets in the millions, getting key keys and making business decisions and communication. So if anyone's interested themselves or their students, um, I'm gonna send some information to Paul afterwards. If you could just kindly send that to the participants, I would much appreciate that. With, I'll also include Paul is, I'm gonna have the step-by-step -step instructions so that way, if you missed anything or want to repeat it, um, you won't have to go watch the video if you don't want to. I will do.